Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. It's easy to forget sometimes that there are more people in the race than just Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev. So I like to cover them all, and uh, there are some interesting things that they say we should be paying attention to because they are all members of parliament, so they all get to uh, have an, an influence and a vote. But before we get into this one, I would like to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it all with your friends. I'm trying to get upgrade my, my uh, camera because this one, the autofocus never works very well. So uh, I would appreciate any assistance that you can give me. All right, let's get right into it. Capel. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the corruption, and his Arrive Scam app is just like the Liberal government. Costly and corrupt. Look at the facts. Two buddies, a basement office, an IT company that does no IT work yet got a $20 million contract for IT, and now the Auditor General tells us that she can't track all the costs, quote, we didn't find records to accurately show how much was spent on what, who did the work, or how and why decisions were made. Will the Prime Minister order his officials to turn over all the documents, stop blocking this investigation, and call for a full RCMP investigation? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Uh, Speaker, it may surprise my honourable friend, but the government doesn't actually direct the National well, he Police doesn't know that. Uh, in terms of investigations. We have confidence, Mr. Speaker, that the RCMP will take the important responsibility they have seriously and do all the work that is required. We have complete faith in the RCMP's independence and in their ability to look into all these matters. And more importantly, Mr. Speaker, our government is also always available to work with parliamentary committees, the Auditor General, General's office Always. to ensure that every document is available so that this important matter like can be resolved. No other the Honourable Member from Regina Capel. They voted against calling in the Auditor General in the first place and blocked multiple attempts at committees to get to the truth. And while the rest of the country viewed the pandemic as a difficult time full of hardship, the Liberal government saw it as an opportunity to enrich their friends. They got caught funneling a billion dollars to the WE organization. A former Liberal MP got a sole source contract worth millions for the pandemic. And now we find out that their app cost 750 times what it should have, didn't work, and was it needed. The Auditor General says the RCMP is going to have to get a court order to get the documents. Why should it take a warrant for Canadians to find out what they did with their money? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't take a warrant for Canadians to see that our government has been transparent both with the Auditor General and our government has been transparent, Mr. Speaker, with parliamentary committees. The facts may bother my friend, but he knows very well that the Auditor General is empowered to do all of this important work. We've accepted the report of the Auditor General. We'd acted on a number of recommendations before receiving the report because we'd asked the procurement ombudsperson to look into this matter. And Mr. Speaker, we value the importance of respecting taxpayers' money and will always do that. Well, I got to tell you, I don't see any evidence of anything that he says being true. I just don't see the evidence. I mean, and I look at this stuff for hours and hours a day. There's nothing in what he says that's true. I mean, I get that it's a nice sound bite and that it's going to go up on TikTok or wherever they put up. Uh, this guy puts up his videos, maybe Twitter, I don't know. And it's going to, he's going to say all of the things, but he's ignoring the facts, right? He's ignoring the fact that the, like he basically stands up and says, you know, he says it in a flowery way, but he's like, oh, no, the Auditor General is uh, not telling you the truth. We we always um, cooperate, and we, you never have to go ahead and get a court order with us. And yet every every time I turn around, look at the Winnipeg uh, lab, lab came out. Even They even took the chair of the House of Commons to, the, to court. They never comply. They never go along with what, what will expose them to be dishonest or to be... Um, not being operating in the best interest of Canadians. And we all know that, but you know, they all want to say it. They all like to hold the line. They all like to uh, put the party ahead of the Canadian people. Let's go on. 
Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister stated that his Arrive Scam app would cost taxpayers $80,000. But in fact, it's 750 times more, over $60 million in climbing. Now, committees studying this scam have heard evidence of forgery, fraud, obstruction of justice, and breach of trust by government officials. The Arrive Scam is just like the Prime Minister, not worth the cost, not worth the corruption. Well, the Prime Minister finally stopped the cover-up and join us to call on the RCMP to expand the investigation. Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Works and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the member is correct to point to the important work of parliamentary committees, which are called to do valuable work to support that of the government in making sure that even in times of crisis, like the pandemic, Proper rules are followed and known and monitored by all public servants, including those at the CBSC. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. What a complete insincere answer. And it, really, it's a fraud, on the, a fraud on the Canadians. Since the Prime Minister took office, over $250 million have been given to GC Strategies, two guys working in their basement, $20 million alone for the Arrive scam. Criminality is rampant, with evidence committee has recently heard. The Arai scam is just like the Prime Minister, not worth the cost, not worth the corruption. Fleeced taxpayers want an honest answer. Will the Prime Minister finally call on the RCMP to expand the investigation? Yes or no? The Honourable Minister for Public Works and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member pointed out again correctly to the importance of investigations. The good news is that there was an investigation by the Auditor General just a few weeks and months ago, and there was an important report table on Monday which, with findings that are totally unacceptable, even in the context of the worst pandemic that we have seen in over a century, the worst economic crisis that we've seen since the 1930s. The findings are unacceptable, and that's why we're going to keep implementing all the recommendations of the Auditor General's report. Good so what I don't like about their answer about the, the pandemic is what you're telling me is that in a crisis, you, you couldn't keep track of anything, and in a crisis, you panicked, right? You guys weren't locked in your houses, so why would you be panicking? Why would you not just be taking the calm, everyday, ordinary steps that you should be taking in government? In fact, you had less going on because you knew half the country was locked up tight. I mean, except for the, the people that were you know, essential or whatever it was who were allowed to work at Walmart, but not necessarily at the small store, the, those guys, everybody else was basically in the house all the time, um, dealing with all of the things that came along with that masks everywhere. So I don't know why you would say to yourself that the pandemic is a reason is a justifiable reason for things getting away on you because there was less going on. So you should have been able to do more. And if you want me to believe, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, you weren't able to do more. But what you're trying to say on at the same time is, is that because it was a, um, a chaotic time, you weren't able to keep track of $60 million. I mean, I, I just think in my mind right away that you need to be calm under pressure. You need to be able to keep track of that stuff. You can't overreact. You can't get hysterical. You can't say to yourself, oh, man, it's an emergency, so there is no checks and balances that I need to take care of. It's all just going to be crazy time anyway, so let's just throw money around and not even worry about where it's going, who it's going to, what they're going to do with it. I mean, come on. It's not even their money, and I guess that would be the difference, right? If they if they had any idea what money like what money's worth, they would be a little bit more careful with it. But when you between the let's be straightforward i mean the liberal party is filled with elitists and activists they don't care about that everyday ordinary mundane stuff not like you know me and you who have to worry about budgets and making sure everything balances and all the rest of it like you know keeping track of your stuff and all the rest of that so maybe that that only like maybe the pandemic only um exasperated that position in them. I, I can't say for certain, but I can say with absolute certainty is the fact that you want to tell me that because it was the pandemic, you couldn't keep track of that money. Well, I reject that as an answer. I think that that's a terrible answer. And I think that all that says is what you're really saying to me is, is that you're not capable of governing because there was an emergency and that you lost your heads. Anyway, you can tell me what you think down in the comments, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me. I um, I will tell you that I know that Justin Trudeau voted against recovering that $60 million, so that's kind of a weird thing. Now I will wrap, and I will uh, thank you for listening. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, 
Uh, hit the notification bell. Share it with your friends. I'll talk to you next time.